Uh, hey guys, Ken Ross here, business consultant. You know what I do. This is my business tech tips series. I want to get right into it this time because this time I'm going to actually give you some editing basics. These are things that I use when I produce uh, my content for my channel. And if you didn't get a chance to view any of the previous videos, I'm going to put a link to the, the, the series right here on this side. Go ahead and click on that check that out it really comes down to I had a conversation with my business development consultant coach Jeff Tockman and he asked me a question he, he said this is a question most people would have because he's seen my channel and he understands kind of my business how do you go about producing your content for your channel and so I, I was intrigued, right? I, I really wanted to make sure that I had a very good understanding and explanation of what it is I was doing and the details that go with it. So that's where this series was birthed. If you haven't seen my interview with Jeff where he asked me the questions and I kind of give you the overview, that's the first part of the series. Now the second thing I want to talk about is how I actually go about editing video. And I have a video for you, basically, of my editing techniques so I will put that coming up here so let's check that out okay Jeff so you asked me how to do some of the basic edits that I do in iMovie so I'm gonna show you a little briefly this is iMovie here I have it open uh, I need to find where the file was for our recording so if I go to uh, the recordings they typically download all my zoom recordings to this documents folder I think that's by default so you go to zoom and then you find the interview that, that we did and in here is your mp4 file now you can just import it into iMovie or you can literally just say I want to start with a blank slate this is a blank movie here and I want it in my timeline so you just drag it down here right see it says drag drag and drop clips you just drag it in there and it automatically imports it it automatically puts it in the timeline. So now we have, we have our video right here. This is the whole thing. And you can scrub over here to make it bigger or smaller. I tend to go like right in here to do edits. So um, once you have it all in the timeline, as you scrub through, it, it shows you the audio. So you can actually do some simple edits in here. So the first thing I want to do is add a transition because I like to make sure I put my transitions in first for the beginning and the end. So that's the fade in right there. So you just take it and you drag it, stick it in there. And then I go all the way to the end and I do the same to the end. This ensures that I don't forget it, right? So at some point um, we say bye to each other. You say bye, I say bye. Yeah, so right here, I want it to kind of fade like right here as we're both waving. So instead of <clears throat> instead of where it's at now, I just need to trim it back some. So I just take this and I trim it back. Now the fade will go right as we're starting to wave to each other. Oops, it's a little it's a little too much. So I just move it a little bit more. And there you go. See, now there you are waving, and I'm gonna start waving before it fades. Um, if I want to actually make a straight cut of the video, right? Because at some point I'm going to have a bunch of video I don't need, right? So I'm going to find a place where we started. Okay, so right here is where we started. And so I want to take about, uh, say, a couple of seconds before. So this is where this timeline really comes in handy, right? So you can zoom in to precisely where you want, but if you're good at scrubbing through and finding exactly where you want you can just kind of eyeball it and i'm going to do a, a shortcut key but if you stick your cursor there right this is where the cursor is and you go up to modify it'll say trim sorry split clip right here that's what we're going to do is the split clip so i i typically use the control b or the apple b um command uh, just kind of automatically so I do that kind of on my own so I just do this and I hit control B and it splits it that's where the split is and I can delete this clip by just selecting on it and hitting the oops 
and hitting the delete key. So you delete um, like that. And as you can see, the transition stays, so I don't have to have to worry about missing the transition. This is why I said put the transition at the, at the beginning so you don't forget and that you never miss it. So now I have the beginning and the end kind of sorted out. And then what I'll do next is I'll go through the whole video and I'll make some random cuts. So like right in here, there's some blank space. I'll make a cut right and then i'll trim it up a little bit and what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that we don't have any gaps in some of the footage and it also keeps the viewer kind of engaged the other thing we can also do is on any clip you can take this clip and since it's in a split screen you can crop to fill it like this and resize it see so now i'm going to resize it so that it's smaller and stick it up here like this and what that's going to do is it's going to make this split screen and it's going to transition from a split screen to a single screen so at some point if i wanted to switch to me i can split the clip here go to this one go back to this view right crop to fill it's already selected and i can just select myself Right, so now you have a transition from yourself, Jeff, to, to me. See? Just like that. And you can go and do that through the whole video, right? Make a nice edited video, very clean. Um, transitioning to the split screen, to individual zoom close ups, and then back to the split screens again. It's the simplest way that I know how to do it quickly. And that's how I publish videos on my uh, channel. And when I'm done, right, all of this stuff is done, and this is the video I want. I go up to the file menu and I say share, and this is how I share it. You just click share and then say YouTube and Facebook. And that's where it creates a, a file that's ready to go for YouTube or Facebook. And you drag that into YouTube or Facebook. You also always want to make sure that the resolution that you select here is the maximum that you can that it will allow you to output it as not every video has uh 1280 this is uh, 720p um because it's 1280 by 720 or you can go even higher if you have better footage but always select the highest setting even though you're going to get the largest file like this is a two gig file right now um, it's going to be totally worth it in the end because the quality does matter uh, when you're talking about YouTube. I believe Facebook, I don't know, uh, does a lot of compression to its video, so it may not matter as much on Facebook, but on YouTube it definitely does. And you want to just basically give it a title, whatever title you want here. Actually will show up in, in Facebook and YouTube, but you can always change it before you upload it. The description, the tags, not as much. Um, I haven't messed with these. I usually just leave those alone, but I'm sure other folks do things with them. And when you're done with all of that and you click next, it will actually render the file. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put in test video Jeff T. Right. So I'm gonna click next. Um, it'll ask you where you want to save it. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. As you can see right here this circle and you'll see right here on my desktop it's starting to save the file it won't be completely done rendering and this is where the speed of your Mac and everything else comes into play it won't be done rendering until this whole pie is white and this file is fun is finished at, at that point it'll actually tell you when it's done um, you now have a file that you can send around you could save it um, you know to OneDrive or send it to people you can also upload it to YouTube and leave it as private so other people can see it you can do all kinds of things you want at that point um, it's really up to you what you want to do but um, that's my process in a nutshell that's what I do when I complete these interviews is I really like to go in and make sure um, the right person is highlighted at the various times that we have a lot of interesting things going on in the split screen. If there's any interactions there, you capture that in the in those clips. 
by switching back and forth. Um, it's, I mean, it's very fun to uh, see that all happen. And then you just export it out and uh, that's how it works. All right, guys, I really hope you got a lot out of that video. Um, please put in the comment section below if you are into iMovie, if you've actually done any editing on iMovie. There's a lot of other things you can do in other editors and other different products, but I wanted to give you how I actually do it. I use iMovie exclusively. There are other products, like I said, Final Cut is a really big product that Apple uh, uses, and that's definitely more professional, a lot of uh, professional filmmakers use that. Um, a lot of professional uh, filmmakers also use Adobe Premiere, which is a licensed product, works both on Windows and on Macintosh. Those two tend to be the two that most professionals go towards, but there are a lot of other options out there that can do some basic things. I would encourage you to definitely take a look at the various different options out there when it comes to editing, but you can always use this as a guide if you want to look at some basic editing tips on iMovie because that's that's what I use. Uh, if you're looking for any tips, put them, you know, ask them in the comment section below. I'll do some research if I don't know it or if I haven't tried it before, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some uh, good pointers to a lot of things that I've done in the past and yeah that's that's really what this is about is me sharing for my for my audience and for people like Jeff because Jeff asked me what is it that it takes to actually produce videos on my channel so stay tuned I'm gonna actually pr produce a, a couple of more videos here I'm gonna talk about some of my equipment next what it is I use to actually produce um, the uh, videos when I'm on the road and what I use in my studio here this is my studio it's fabulous I also have a nice uh, lavalier uh, lapel type microphone here I'm using today sometimes I use that sometimes I don't but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that video speak for itself please post in the comments section below what you'd like me to cover next if there are any things anything that you saw in this video or you have more questions about in this video please put it in the comment section as well and I'll, I'll do a follow-up to this I know editing isn't something that's really easy or even intuitive but it takes a lot of work if you commit to practicing it and you do editing on a regular basis you'll be able to do it a lot quicker and more efficiently um, than even in the video that I was showing because I'm trying to give instruction at the same time as show you the edits so that's all I have for today thank you for your time and attention this has been a, a great series so far I want to continue this series uh, till I get through everything that I, I want to talk about when it comes to producing video Video content online and how that actually looks because I think for most people it seems like a, 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 an arduous task there's a lot of technology involved and different things that could that could go wrong but I really want to encourage people to try to do do one thing at a time or look at each part of this process as a process and not get so overwhelmed at the whole thing if you if you commit to doing one thing and you really want to, to produce something of quality you got to start somewhere Please leverage my, my knowledge in that, and I will do my best to help you get started. So with that, I'm Ken Ross. Please like and share this video with your friends, and visit my website, I'mKenRoss.com, and until I see you next time, I'll see you around.